Uh, the U.S. economy is heading for a recession, may already be in one. You never know you're in a recession until it already started. And you look back and say, oh, gee, you know, uh, um, interest rates are peak, stock market's coming down, unemployment's going up, initial claims are going up, et cetera. You can look at all that data, and there's a lot more besides, and say it doesn't look good. But then it's like, oh, gee, it's actually a lot worse than we thought. We've been in the recession since, let's say, October 2023. Um, but whether we're in one right now, which we may be, or we're in one soon, which is highly likely, you're going to roll into 2024 and all this electoral politics that we just discussed in a recession, possibly a bad one, and maybe a, a, the a, what we call what I call stage two of the banking panic. Don't forget good old Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic and Credit Credit Suisse failed 1877, I believe, uh, one of the biggest oldest banks in the world failed. You got the shotgun wedding with UBS. So everyone's like, oh, well, thank goodness the banking crisis is over. It's not over. Uh, it's in. Um, it's at halftime. Everyone's in the locker room, but they're going to come out and play a second half. There's going to be stage two of the, that banking crisis. A financial crisis is not the same as a recession. But what if we had both? Look at California. I mean, President Xi of China came to California for a summer. What did they do? They had to like go out and physically remove all these homeless people and, and hobos and bums and drug addicts, clean up the needles, tear down the tents. They then like got public sanitation into like power wash the sidewalks. Uh, I don't want to tell you what was on the sidewalks using chem chemical solvents, etc., and cleaned it up. Only a certain area, by the way, kind of around where the um, where the summit was. Then they put up a wall. All these people hate walls. Well, they put up a wall, a security perimeter around where the summit was. So these homeless people couldn't get in there. Um, well, that's how bad it was that they had to do that. Now that she's gone, they're going to take the wall down. It'll be back the way it was. It, it's an open sewer. Um, yeah. So is that, and LA is not much better. Um, they mandated uh, electric vehicles, which don't work. I mean, they, they, they physically go down the road, but they don't uh, they don't solve any environmental problems. There, there really aren't any with CO2. Um, they're they're uh, pushing these things nationwide, destroying their economy. So it's just the guy you want as president. So I would say if he wins, that's not my forecast, but it, but if he does, get ready for the uh, uh, the whole country to look like California, which is a pretty scary thought. Yeah, I think uh, Trump had a lot of failures. Uh, you know, he's, he talks a good game, but he's from Queens, so he's kind of a blowhard. I mean, he, Trump said, we're going to build a wall. Well, the, the wall is estimated about 1,800 miles from kind of Brownsville, Texas to San Diego, you know, pick your pick your spots, but about 1,800 miles. Trump built 50 miles, five zero of new wall, and refurbished about 200 miles of existing wall where he he made it better. Um, so where I come from, if your goal is 1,800 miles and you did 250 miles, you failed. Uh, and he'll blame Nancy Pelosi and all that. But, you know, you think if Nancy Pelosi were president, she would have let anybody stand in her way. I mean, Trump doesn't have the cojones to actually do so. He talks a good game. I agree. If you gave me 10 Trump policies, I would probably agree with nine of them, maybe all 10. My problem with Trump is that he he doesn't actually do anything. Um, and, you know, people say, you know, Christopher Ray, head of the FBI, the FBI goon squad smashing down doors. It looks like a neo fascist. I agree with that. Who appointed Christopher Ray? It was Donald Trump. Uh, this, you know, the U.S. attorney in Delaware is giving Hunter Biden a sweetheart deal. Yeah, that's true. Who appointed that U.S. attorney? Donald Trump. In other words, Trump doesn't know anything about the appointments process. He doesn't really understand how his own government works. Um, he, I'll give him points on foreign policy. He, we did not have any new wars under Trump. I think it's a major accomplishment. Um, he did open doors to North Korea. Uh, you look at North Korea today, they're in bed with the Russians, supplying them weapons, but that was not true under Trump. Um, there was no major war in the Middle East under Trump, et cetera. Uh, so I'll give Trump very good marks on foreign policy. He says stuff he means that people take him seriously. Uh, and of course, the president has a much freer hand in foreign policy under the Constitution historically. It's in domestic policy, things like the budget and the wall uh, and, and a lot else. Um, where, uh, you know, Trump says we're going to stop social media from censoring. He didn't. Uh, the, you know, the censorship of social media right through the election and certainly amplified in the Biden administration is worse than ever. They've trashed the First Amendment. Um, so the question is, has Trump learned anything? Uh, 
And what I see, um, he does, he is relying on a couple think tanks to help him with the appointments process. He, he's awful at it. No one's worse uh, in my experience. Um, there's something called the Plum Book. Uh, you can buy it from the government printing office. I'm sure it's available online. The Plum Book is a list of, uh, it's at least 3,000, but maybe much higher, maybe 5,000 or more government jobs, important government jobs, where the president can just pick anyone he wants. It's not the civil service. Um, basically, the president has appointment power. Sometimes Senate confirmation is required, but but not all of them. Uh, and what you're supposed to do, and what Obama did in 2008 with help from Valerie Jarrett and a lot of other people behind the curtain, they filled in every one of those blanks, thousands of jobs. They said, this person's getting this. And it's not just cabinet level, it's deputy secretary, assistant secretary, deputy assistant secretary, uh, heads of agencies, SEC, EPA, you know, FTC, et cetera. They had them all figured out with loyalists. Um, and then Trump was clueless, didn't understand what I just described, didn't have that list. He, Trump made Chris Christie the head of his transition. Jared Kushner put Chris, uh, sorry, Chris Christie put Jared Kushner's father in jail. Do you think there's any love loss between Christie and the and the Trump family? Uh, so why would you pick Christie as your transition advisor when Jared Kushner hates his guts and probably vice versa? Another dumb move by Trump. And nobody thought Trump was going to win. Chris Christie didn't think Trump was going to win. So he never did any transition work because he said there's not going to be a transition because Hillary is going to win, which shows that he's an idiot. So, um, so this time, uh, so, well, what that means is that all those Obama, those 8,000 Obama appointees I described, they're still in place. A lot of them are still there today, even after four years of Trump, and certainly Biden didn't do anything to change it. They were there the whole time. They are the deep state and, and you know, the Russia hoax and, uh, um, you know, the Mueller report and um, the, the, the inspector general, uh, all this stuff we heard about for four years, nothing happened. Nothing happened because the deep state made sure it didn't. So, so Trump's to blame for all that. Now the question is, will he do better this time? I, uh, my information is he has a couple think tanks that are working on this. They're filling in all the blanks. Trump can't do it, but they are. And if Trump goes with that, they're going to put in real loyalists, not just competent bureaucrats, but, you know, kind of hard shell conservative Republican Trump loyalists who then will try to clean out the swamp. The, Trump did not do it the first time, but he might do it the second time. So if he keeps up his A game in foreign policy and he improves his uh, appointments process in domestic policy, see, I would, you know, I'm not running for anything, but I would, I would fire the director of the FBI, but I would fire the deputy director, the assistant deputy. I would clean out the first four or five tiers. You're all fired. Just day one, you're all fired. And, you know, get some temps in there or uh, maybe bring the agency to a halt temporarily and then get some good people in who are who are going to, you know, uphold justice and apply justice equally and stop weaponizing the DOJ. Um, let's see. So I guess uh, I think Trump would be good on foreign policy. He's pretty good on economic policy. Some talk that he'll bring back Steve Munchen as secretary of the Treasury. I think Mun Munchen did a good job. Wall Street has a lot of confidence in him. So it could be a lot better than the Trump first term.